Korea resplendent with time honored history, part one. Cradle of the Korean people. Kim Jong Il, chairman of the National Defense Commission of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, said, "The Koreans, a nation of one and the same blood and language, have lived in one territory for thousands of years." From time immemorial, the Korean nation is a homogeneous one, who has maintained the bloodline of the same ancestors and lived in the same territory, and a gifted and resourceful one, who has flowered a time-honored history and brilliant culture with Pyongyang as a center. Many fossilized archaeopteryx, dinosaurs, and pterodactyls have been discovered in Korea, and the relics and remains left the primitive man and the fossilized man evacuated around Pyongyang. Based on this, President Kim Il Sung left his important last instructions concerning the birthplace of Koreans. Tens of thousands of years have passed since the dawn of human history. The problems of the origin of Koreans and their fathers had been an unknown historic secret buried in the stream of times. Under the wise guidance of the Workers' Party of Korea. The primitive relics and fossilized Homo sapiens at the dawn of human history have been unearthed in succession in the basin of the Dadong River, centering on Pyongyang. As a result, the history of the Korean nation has been supplemented and formulated in an all-round way, and the problem of the origin of Koreans has been elucidated. The problem of the origin of Koreans is an issue to clarify that the Korean nation is a homogeneous one, which has maintained the homogeneity of its blood and the purity of its lineage. In the past, the cradle of mankind in the East Asian area was known to be the Java Island of Indonesia and the basin of the Yellow River in China. Therefore. The bourgeois caste historians insisted that the Korean nation is the descendant of a tribe which came south from the north in the Neolithic age, or of a tribe which came north from the south in the Bronze Age. The recently unearthed materials, however, have proved that these theories do not coincide with the historical facts at all. Where then is the birthplace of Koreans? Where did the fathers who developed the land and territory of Korea emerge, and what on earth were they? In order to clarify the origin of mankind, it is important to study the history of evolution and development of the organisms. Originally, the Homo sapiens emerged from the ape-man, lord of all creatures, in the long processes of the evolution and development of animals spanning hundreds of millions of years via the reptilian age. When dinosaurs, tetrodactyls, and archaeopteryxes thrived from the primitive organisms in the Paleozoic era, 
The primitive men who came into being in the world were evolved and developed into the Paleolithic men at the next stage. The Paleolithic men into Neolithic men at their next stage, and finally, the Neolithic men became the men of Asian type. All these long processes of evolution and development from the organisms to mankind were carried out in the land of Korea. It can be understood through various fossils of the geological era, including the primitive organisms and fishes and fossilized bivalves of Mount Taesung, which have been unearthed. The amphibia, which made a first transition from the underwater to the land, was evolved in the land of Korea. The fossils of Paleozoic plants and Mesozoic plants on Mount Dasan, excavated in the Dadong River basin, enable one to picture the scenery of the ancient times of this land. In the history of human evolution were the reptilian age and the dinosaur age when they drove amphibia into the water and monopolized the world of ground animals. These are the fossilized traces of dinosaur of Ryeonggun-ri, which lived in the area south of Pyongyang, and the fossilized traces of dinosaur in Sansung-ri, which are unearthed in the fossil bed of the Mesozoic leaves of tree. The fossilized Archaeopteryxes, which fly up in the blue sky for the first time, and the fossilized Tetradactyls. The reptilian age, when dinosaurs, Tetradactyls, and Archaeopteryxes thrived, is an age of special importance in elucidating the origin of mankind. It is because birds and animals were divided, evolved, and developed with the reptilian age as a diverging point, and finally the lord of creatures akin to mankind emerged from animals. The rich and varied fossilized animals, which evolved and developed in Korea in the era following the reptilian age, tell that the Pyongyang area had favorable natural circumstances for the emergence of mankind. The secret of the cradle and birthplace of Koreans began to be disclosed at last in common model remains on the bank of the Sangwon Stream in Pyongyang. This is the site of common model remains on the bank of the Sangwon Stream in the Dadong River Basin, which had kept the secret of the dawn of mankind of one million years ago. Just in this common model cave lived the fathers of Koreans, the primitive man who had just emerged from the age man. This shows the natural circumstances around the Sangwon Stream, which taught its original state on the basis of the common model remains.
As you see, the natural circumstances around Pyongyang were noted for its scenic beauty and food to live in from time immemorial. These are the represented looks of the common more primitive man, the fathers of Koreans. Probably the looks of the common more primitive man, the first ancestors who were born of this land long before one million years ago, would be similar to those of them. These are the remains and relics left by common more primitive men. They include a sharp-ended stone implements, trapezoidal stone implements of Kudapuang type, and fragmental stone implements, the primitive labor tools that the common more primitive man used for the first time. The stone implements of this type are known to the world to belonging to the Paleolithic age of one million years ago. A great number of the fossilized bones of ancient animals were discovered in the Gumun Moro Cave too. According to experts who studied and analyzed the absolute data of them, it was disclosed that they belonged to the Stone Age. It is interesting that most of the Gumun Moro fossilized animals are already extinct or no longer live in Korea. The fossilized bones of this huge animal is big rhinoceros, which roamed in herbs in the plain areas of Pyongyang in the remote geological age. This is the skull of flat antlers deer. There are many such deer in the Tadong River basin at that time. Found in the Kerman Maru Cave were more than 1,000 fossilized bones of animals of 27 species, including monkey, Sangwan horse, large spotted hyena, buffalo, and elephant. The common more primitive man made and used the stone implements, the first labor tools, to dismember the spoils of the chase, cut off their flesh and break their bones. In this period, Korea was warm and good place for the inhabitation of primitive man who did not know about clothes. At the dawn of mankind, the west of South Seas of Korea were linked with the continent, and the East Sea was blocked by the land. The land of Korea, which was directly linked to the hot southern continent, was a hot zone, which was affected by the tropical climate. Therefore, in this land, there lived a great number of the subtropical animals came for the primitive man. In particular, the Dadong River of the ancient times was a big one skirting round the southern tip of Korea, linking up with the Amnok and Songhua rivers. In the Tadong River Basin, there were many natural caves, which embraced a primitive man and subtropical fruits were ripe in and out of the season, so that it was favorable for the inhabitation of the primitive man. As mentioned above, 
the first ancestors of Koreans emerged and lived around Pyongyang, where landscape was beautiful and products were abundant. In the light of the stone implements made by them, or in the light of date suggested by fauna, the common, more primitive man were the first Homo sapiens who had emerged in the earliest period in the East Asian area. Recently, the remains and relics left by those who lived in the later period than the common, more primitive man have been unearthed in the first cultural stratum in the Jungri Cave. On the bank of the Sangwon Stream, here more than 40 items of precious stone implements were discovered, of which this stone implement of horn shape was a tool for hunting animals. Along with stone implements, a great number of fossilized animals akin to the common moor fauna were discovered in this cave. This tells that the descendants who followed the common, more primitive man lived in this area. This animal bone, in which something is inscribed, and the animal bone with a clear evidence broken by striking down with a stone implement, were left by them. Along with the fossilized bones of ancient animals piled up above one meter, the fossilized skulls of Paleolithic man at the next stage of primitive man were unearthed at Taehyungdong, Deokpo District, Pyongyang City. This is the skull of a Paleolithic man who is known widely to the world as Deokpo Man, and its restoration picture. The Deokpo man, with protruding eyelid and low and receding forehead, was one of the next、uh, primitive men whose primitive characteristics remain as they are. At the stage of Paleolithic man, a large number of people spread and lived in the Tadong River basin. These are the remains of hunting grounds by Paleolithic man in the Tadong River basin. Recently, thousands of items of fossilized animal bones, which are regarded to be those of 100,000 years ago, have been excavated from the limestone shaft cave in Rodongri, Sangwon County, and in Kumongri, Sungo District. With the Nam River between, the Paleolithic man who lived in this land was sagacious and courageous people who hunted wild animals by using the natural pit like a shaft cave. The ancestors of Koreans at the stage of primitive man used a natural fire, but Paleolithic man know how to make and use fire. These are the site of the campfire ground discovered in the second cultural stratum of Jungni Cave, and the site of the campfire ground in Hwachondong in the Tadong River Basin. The sites of the campfire ground, charred animal bones and fossil bones thrown away by Paleolithic man. Tell that Paleolithic had more developed brains to a certain extent than those at the previous stage. As you see, in the basin of the Tadong River lived a Paleolithic man who followed, and then the Neolithic man at the next stage who maintained their bloodline. That many fossil men, including Mandal men, Dyongok men. Sungnisan men and Kumchan men were unearthed in the Tadong River basin. Shows that the evolutionary process of mankind was carried out ceaselessly in this area. During the period when Neolithic men lived, the fourth ice age arrived on the earth. With the result. That cold weather came to the Dadong River Basin too.
The cold weather put the animals inhabited in the warm areas into the crisis of extermination and threatened the existence of mankind. These are the glacial traces on Mount Umjin around Pyongyang discovered by Korean scholars recently. The pointed peak, chipped by ice, tells that the high mountains in this area were covered with perpetual snows. These fossil animal bones are those of elephant and buffalo that lived in the land of Korea, but had already exterminated from the animal world in the Ice Age. Those who survived in this period were the intelligent and sagacious Pyongyang men who withstood severe cold and challenged mountain glacier. They overcame the cold, harnessing fire and making leather clothes to wear with bone needles. Nor is this all. They made primitive hunting tools like a javelin and fought the wild animals. These are stone edge core and joint bone implements made by Neolithic men. The bone ores and needles prove that they were more developed men than Paleolithic ones. It can be understood through the erect and high forehead and lower the swelling of the upper eyelid of Mandal men who left the Mandal remains in Sungo district Pyongyang city. The fossil skulls of those who left the cave remains in Dyonggok on the bank of the Sangwon stream show the more advanced aspects akin to the contemporary Koreans. Unlike those of the Paleolithic men, the erect and high forehead, the swelling of the upper eyelid, missed and roundish and high skulls tell that the Neolithic men in the Dadong River Basin were advanced ones whose brain capacity was greater than that of the previous periods. This is the bone of a chin of Sung Nisan men, which is similar to that of contemporary men. The ancestors of Koreans at the stage of Neolithic men had a projected chin like this, but the Paleolithic man had not such a chin, and the primitive man had a chin like that of ape man. The changing course of the bone of man's chin, ranging from ape man to primitive man, Paleolithic man and Neolithic man shows that the land of Korea, including the Dadong River Basin, was the cradle of Koreans, where their ancestors had buried their placenters there and lived generation after generation. These are the dwelling sites of 8,000 years ago, which were discovered in the Dadong River Basin. As mentioned above, the first ancestors of Koreans originated from the Neolithic men around Pyongyang, developed an agricultural culture, leading a permanent settler life in this area in the earliest period. They made horn hoes, stone hoes, and stone plows, and had engaged in farming, digging up soil in the vast land in the Tatum River Basin. This is testified by the carbonized grains and ancient spinning wheels discovered at the dwelling sites. The first ancestors of Koreans were talented people who knew how to reel thread and weave cloth to make clothes and made vessels with engraved design big and small. 
The cultural vessel with engraved designs, which emerged from the Tadong River basin, spread to the wide areas, including the Korean Peninsula, forming a cultural community. This is a culture created by the ancestors of Koreans who formed the community of kinship. The stone implements and various labor tools, which show the course of the change of Korean stone orcs, ranging over one million years, from the rude stone implements left by the common mode primitive man, are associated with a time-honored history of the ancestors who had lived in the land of Korea, centering on the Tadong River basin. The forces of man, which went through many stages of human evolution and development from the lord of all creatures, show that the first ancestors of Koreans had successfully traversed the long course of the dawn of mankind in a line genetically from one million years ago. Like this, the Korean people had lived in the same land centering on the Datong River basin around Pyongyang from the period when the dawn of mankind broke, not from the Neolithic era or Bronze era, and emerged as the man of ancient type of Korea, quite different from other nations in the neighborhood. This is a tomb in the Datong River Basin, in which servants were buried alive with their dead master, who was guessed to be a chief of the Pakdal tribes. In the Datong River Basin were unearthed a great number of the skulls of men of ancient type of Korea. The characteristics of ancient Koreans are that they had erect and high forehead, round and high skull, medium-sized face, and high eye socket. They are fundamentally different from those of Banpa type, who have narrow and long face in the Yellow River Basin, those of Baikal type, who have skull not so high, and those of Chokuma type, who have low and receding forehead. As mentioned above, the Korean people are not the descendants of those who flowed in from the north or the south. But the people who have lived in this land, centering on Pyongyang from generation to generation, from time immemorial, indeed, the Datong River Basin is the birthplace of Koreans, the cradle of ancient culture, and the sacred place of the Korean nation. Han Gun, father of the Korean nation, was born of Pyongyang as the direct descendant of ancient Korean. Wang Gumsung, the capital city of Han Gun, Korea, is Pyongyang too. It is testified by the historical records written in old books. As you see, the history of the Korean nation began in Pyongyang and has been developed steadily with Pyongyang as a base. President Kim Il Sung found not only the first ancestors of the Korean nation, but also their birthplace, and thus formulated nearly the history of the Korean nation. Irrespective of the regions where they were born, 
the Korean people are the descendants of the same race which originated in fossils of mankind discovered in the area of Pyongyang and the homogeneous nation which has maintained the homogeneity and purity of blood. <laughs>